Coming up on this retrospective episode of Outlook TV. Outlook goes to Montreal Pride's Community Day. Toronto to Montreal, the friends for life, right? Vancouver's top drag superstar. And much, much more. Hello and welcome to Outlook TV. I'm Rebecca Wine. And I'm Ollie. And you're watching Outlook TV, the queer magazine news show that brings you the stories that matters the most from coast to coast. And we've got a retrospective show for you, bringing back some of our favorite stories. And first up, we've got Community Day in Montreal. That was so amazing because it was all about our viewers and we're all so thankful for it. Hello Montreal, I'm here at the Community Day of Montreal Pride with Sister Fancy Pants and Nina Mercury. We took the time today to say a big thank you to all of our viewers here in Montreal and we filmed a special episode just for you. Happy Pride! Happy Pride! Happy Pride. Happy Pride. We are the OutTV booth here at Montreal Pride Community Day. We're so excited that OutTV is here because that's where you can catch our show, Outlook TV. Bon fierté! Bon fierté! Bon fierté, Montréal! So basically right now we're selling merch made by trans people and we're selling music too to raise money for the Trans Trenders Music Awards, which is the first awards show in the world dedicated to trans musicians, um, which is happening on September 21st in Brooklyn. Happy Pride, Montreal! Bon fierté! Ah, bon fierté! Bon fierté! I wish you an happy Pride! I like to see the diversity of uh, groups and cause and people fighting and being engaged to uh, change things. Hi, this is Wendy Warhol, out of drag with my mom, Mina Mercury, and we wish you a happy Pride! Hi, I'm Isabelle, and I'm from uh, Montreal Pride, so everyone, I wish you a very good Pride and be happy to who you are, you're fabulous. Bon fierté! Happy Pride! Happy, happy Pride! Pride. Bonne fierté, Montréal! Happy Pride! Welcome to Montreal! Happy Pride, everyone! You're watching Outlook TV! Bonne yeah. fierté! Yes. Happy, happy Pride. Pride! Happy Pride, Montreal! Bonne fierté, Montréal! Happy Pride, Montreal! Happy Pride! Pride extravaganza! Bonne fierté, Montréal! Fierté! Bonne fierté! Bonne fierté, Montréal! Bonne fierté, Montréal! Woo! Happy Pride, guys! Enjoy your day! Bonjour! Happy Pride! My name is Hisham from Hisham Draws. Wishing you all the best. Hi, this is Gabriel from La Fête Arc-en-Ciel. I'm wishing everyone a happy Pride, bonne fierté, and you're watching Outlook TV. From Community Day in Montreal, this is Sister Fancy Pants with Mina Mercury and Ollie. Next up, let's revisit Catches. Help me, I'm dying. Well, she's still alive because she was on Outlook TV this year. <laughs> hey, everybody. I'm here at the Vogue Theatre in Vancouver to watch Katya in her show, Help Me, I'm Dying. And she's starting off here in Vancouver and going all across Canada. So we got an interview with her. Watch us. Vancouver. The elevator pitch for the show would be something to the effect of, imagine an all-stars episode of I Didn't Know I Was Pregnant shot through a kaleidoscope lens. Yeah, for a reasonable amount of time. No intermission. That's it. Well, I love to laugh. Who doesn't? Um, but uh, usually my intention on stage is not to make people laugh. I just want to make people think. Um, but. Uh, I, I think as far as inspiration goes, I like um, I really like Maria Bamford, the comedian. Um, I also love uh, I love like any kind of species in nature that changes its sex and then um, dies during procreation. You are a beautiful crowd. On the right we have Surly Nerasable. On the left we have 
bow-legged and plucky. In the middle we have slick with indecision. And up top we have sex offenders? Too early to tell, too early to tell. Okay, well, being an inspiration to thousands and thousands and thousands of people, I think the most uh, worthwhile inspirational little tidbit I could impart upon the masses is, don't be afraid to give up. <laughs> no, seriously. And I don't mean like, you know, don't stop trying, um, but you know, it's sometimes you just have to call it quits, in a manner of speaking, and then, um, you know, either try something else or don't. How about that? Yeah. Скрипачом делился скрипкой не несправедливо. PP tapes. Oh, right, yeah. Well, I no official comment on the P tapes, but I, I thought of a great uh, money-making uh, venture. So, you know, in the airport, I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but when I'm in the airport or, like, in a public restroom, I get incredibly pee shy, and I'll have to go to the bathroom so, so bad, but I just can't do it once I get to the urinal. So I thought about pumping in uh, pee sounds to the, you know, like, uh, on the speakers in the, in the ladies' or men's room really loud so nobody has a problem. What do you think? I think that would work. It would, like it would help. Elevator music for the bathroom, like you know, Muzak for the for people who are pee shy. I think it would be good. I think it'd be great, actually. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think it would help help a lot. I could probably parlay it into an album, just all like sort of um you know like personal uh, bodily uh, functions, like maybe set to like a like kind of an Enya like mm -hmm. uh, tribal beat or something. The screeches from your gaping maw now providing an unwelcome soundtrack to the new horror film that my life has become. If you get the opportunity uh, to smell me in person, take it. With caution, um, the scent will linger for weeks. Yeah. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Oh my gosh, that was an amazing show. You need to check Katya out online and get tickets. I'm Joseph Bossman for Outlook TV. We're going to have to take a little break now. Well, I'm going to use the break to turn on my subtitle on my TV because one of my revolution this year is to read more. <laughs> Welcome back. You're watching Outlook TV. Well, Angus did a little interview with Joe Average about the Equality Coin. Yeah, it's the 50th year commemorating decriminalization of gay sex. Hot off the press, the newly minted Equality Coin in Canada is now in circulation. Today we're going to meet the artist Joe Average and speak to MP Randy Boisineau in Ottawa to talk about this historic event. I got contacted from the, um, by the Royal Canadian Mint. And they explained to me... Um, the situation, you know, that in 1969, homosexuality was decriminalized in Canada, and um, that, that next year, meaning 2019, will mark 50 anniversaries, and they wanted to make a coin. Well, she was very quick to say, um, and we've already decided on, a, on, on which image of yours we want, um, which is great because it took a lot of pressure off of me, you know. Any of my art, if, if there's a human in it or any sort of creature in it, I try and keep them gender, gender neutral always. I, I don't like to assign any race to them either. Usually the skin tone I use is like this orange color. I call it my Esperanto orange. MP Randy Boisneau joins us now from Ottawa via Skype. Can you speak to us today about the equality coin? The uh, Canadian Mint issued a commemorative coin celebrating 50 years of decriminalization of uh, homosexuality. It's now being known as the Equality Coin. And as I said when I was with Minister Morneau and the Mint uh, CEO and chair of the board uh, in Toronto when we unveiled the coin, that this is an example of another step in the path to equality. I mean, if you go back 15,000 years and you look at two-spirit people in First Nations communities and then you look at everything that happened uh, after uh, colonization and uh, the, the struggles and the fights that happened through the 20s, the 50s, 
60s, 70s to now, it's important that we mark uh, these milestones. It doesn't mean by any stretch of the imagination that the work is over, because it's not, but it's an important moment to pause and celebrate uh, that historic change to the law in Canada. Could you now comment on the artwork design on the coin? We were able to, you know, they make sure that the that the coin could be, you know, interpreted in a in a, in a multiple number of ways. And I, I got to say, Joe Average has done just a wonderful job in uh, in demonstrating in one image, you know, uh, sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression. And you're right, the first time that any country in the world has put an LGBTQ2 themed issue on uh, their official currency, and so. It's a good year for Canada. I hope that, you know, in years to come, when somebody pulls one of these coins out of their pockets, that it just reminds them that it's such a simple message, that love is love. I mean, it's just so simple. That's all I hope. For Outlook TV, this is Angus Pratt at the Jim Diva Plaza in Vancouver. Next up, let's revisit the Friends for Life ride. Well, actually, I was there, and Sister Fancy Pants wears really well her name because she looks so glamorous at a finish line. Imagine that, Toronto to Montreal, and she still looked fabulous. Mm -hmm. This is Sister Fancy Pants at the start of the Friends for Life bike rally benefiting the People with AIDS Association. Today, we're going to be starting off riding from Toronto to Montreal. Let's join over 300 cyclists and volunteers on the six-day journey and find out more about their story. <laughs> the bike rally actually supports every aspect of the Toronto People with AIDS Foundation, PWA. Uh, principally, it supports our financial assistance. We provide over $200,000 every year in direct financial support to people living with HIV for out-of-pocket medical expenses. Yeah. It also supports our Meals on Wheels program that we fully subsidize for people who are exiting hospitalization or who are palliating, who are dying. Um, and it also provides support to our essentials market, which we call our food bank. It's actually my fourth year volunteering. I have done the one day ride a couple of times, okay. but I'm a big fan of volunteering. You know, I really enjoy the community. I love enjoy giving back. It feels really good because people are doing so much for us and it's just a wonderful community to be a part of. It's you know, I come back year after year because uh, I really feel like the bike rally is a unique and formidable event, you know? Lots of charities raise one and a half million dollars, but almost nobody raises as much as we do with as little as we do it with. This is about 300 people who are going to raise 1.5 million dollars uh, and an entirely volunteer-led event, which is remarkable and unique. And the magic of that brings me back over and over and over again. People's commitment, their sense of community, I love it. And I've been with the Friends for Life Back Rally for 18 years. And this year, what are you doing? And this year, I am volunteering as a Rubbermaid rustler. This is, I drive a truck from Toronto to Montreal for six days, and I lift the bins. Wow. Lift on and lift off. It's a lot of work. Yeah. And the other side. This is Bike Rally 21. Okay. So I started in year two. I took a year off in 09 to do the Copenhagen Out Games and I've been back since, so. Six days, 600 kilometers, $1.6 million raised. We're at the finish line of the PWA Friends for Life bike rally in Montreal. This is Sister Fancy Pants for Outlook TV. Let's check out Seacope Secondary's Day of Pink with the Queen of Pink herself, Connie Smudge. And there was a lot of pink and a lot of history all around. Oh, hi, kittens. It's your intrepid reporter, the unstoppable Connie Smudge, reporting right here from deepest, dark, deepest, deep cove here at Sea Cove Fabulous Secondary School. This is our, I think, our second or third time here. It's pink t-shirt day, my darlings, and I'm back in school district 44 to spread some love. And it's all about inclusivity and diversity, and we've got a couple of surprises down the road, too. So stick with us. I've got things to show you. It's going to be a great day. 
Today is International Day of Pink, and we are honoring and celebrating history makers, trailblazers in Canada who've kind of been left out of Canadians' uh, culture and our curriculum and our textbooks. And we want to shed light to some of the really important stories that have been happening. We partnered with the Canadian Centre for Gender and Sexual Diversity. Oh, 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 oh. Being a residential school survivor, you know, it wasn't easy growing up in the 60s as a gay Aboriginal man. Yeah. It was challenging. The, uh, the sexual abuse that happened in residential school continued when we came home, right? Sea Cove in downtown Deep Cove is a trailblazer when it comes to LGBTQ issues. Yeah. Um, they had their first uh, Gay Straight Alliance in 2006, yep. and they've done many, many events. Uh, the students themselves are, are an inspiration, I think. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this this is amazing, Connie. I mean, to, to see the kind of um, celebration of diversity, not just acceptance, tolerance, forget it, yeah. right? I mean, we celebrate, and C Cove is all about celebrations. And in Canada, we still got challenges. I mean, I can't give blood, I'm a gay man. I want to be human, not a sexuality to deprecate. Look at me here. I am genuine. I am real. I, I have a lot of passion behind all this, like, LGBTQ activism and everything about that, yeah. Everyone should be able to belong. As um, a queer person myself, I have struggled a little. I, it was really special because I'm part of the GSA and so putting this together and getting to this point has been a lot of work and I, just seeing everybody's hard work was really cool. It's just special to see the school come together. What did you take from today? Um, I honestly just really love like how much like awareness our school wants to bring and just like how accepting everyone is and that they just, yeah. yeah. I see you've got a pretty fabulous music program here. Yeah, they're amazing. It's great to have everybody just come together and show support for something that, like, is so important. Well, my kittens, that is one international pink day all done. But I want you to remember to think about the things that you've learned today every day of the year. I am still your intrepid reporter reporting for Outlook TV. This is Connie Smudge. <gasps> It's time for us to take another little break now. Yeah, because I need a little movement break. Oh, that's some nice moves. You like my moves? I do. Yeah. Welcome back. You're watching Outlook TV. Up next, we have a tribute to the legendary and iconic drag queen Endora in Toronto. Oh, I do love going to Toronto. I love it too. Hi there, my name is Morgan James, and I'm here at Cock Bar in Toronto, Ontario, and we're here for the Great Imposters Show. Let's go inside and see what tonight's all about. <laughs> So we're here at Cock Bar in Toronto, and I've got Endora. She's the Queen Mother of the Imperial Court of Toronto, and she's actually the mastermind behind tonight's show about the great imposters. Endora, can you tell us a little bit about why we're here this evening? Well, you know, uh, my grandmama, Michelle DeBerry, um, was the original great imposter. She started the great imposters, and uh, it's been running ever since. And um, I wanted to celebrate her, and I wanted to celebrate the new generation of the great imposters, and I thought it was a great time. So for those of us that don't know our history, what are the great imposters? The great imposters was a drag troupe that was uh, started around 1978 by Michelle DeBerry, and she had uh, four, four partners with herself. Um, and they did drag shows sort of all around um, Ontario and across Canada in a little band. And they would do um, little small town uh, drag shows. And um, it was very successful. They had a lot of fun and it ran for a long time. And uh, they were quite famous. So before Drag Race, 
before Priscilla Queen of the Desert, before Tu Wong Fu, we had the great imposters. Exactly, we had Michelle DeBerry. So Hi there, I'm with Divine Ask, aka Brian Greenwood, who is the one the founder of The Great Imposters, The New Generation. So tell me, with drag being so prevalent, we've got drag race, we've got drag shows in every bar, what makes The Great Imposters different and the better drag troupe? Well, what makes us different is that we are uh, old school. We are enveloping uh, a very unique and Canadian perspective on what drag was and is and can still be. It's sort of like everything old is new again. So Rusty Ryan and Michelle uh, DuBerry founded The Great Apostles originally, and they developed a very burlesque sort of view of drag, and they took it to the outlying areas of Canada, Ontario and about, and brought a little bit of Las Vegas to everywhere they went. Our focus is on impersonations, tributes, and body ribald comedy. Uh, we aren't so much about the acrobatics and the uh, gymnastics. No, no death drops? No. No death drops. The only death drop I suffer is after the show, I'm so goddamn tired I fall down. <laughs> And for our last story, we have Vancouver's top drag superstar. You made that sound really easy. Well, you know, I like a drag queen on top. <laughs> <laughs> Queens, kings, and hopeful drag queers. Outlook TV is here at Celebrities in Vancouver, and we are here to partake in the search for Vancouver's next drag superstar. So clutch your pearls, hold on to your wigs, we're going in. Really about giving the new performers in the city a chance to have a stage. Um, give them challenges that talent buyers are, lo are looking for. Are they able to live up to those challenges? <laughs> I am looking for confidence. I'm looking for a superstar. And you can tell when someone walks on the stage and they possess that star quality, it's like, it's hard to take your eyes off of them. Drag is everything about art and dancing, music, so it has everything in it, and that's why I love it. And I love to doing like doing makeup, and making outfits. It's just about creating something new, right? My number, I'm actually wearing my mom's wedding dress, and it's a very important number to me. Um, it's about the Hall of Fame. Um, I'm paying homage to some of the people who are in the Hall of Fame while also having some surprise guests. Um, I'm trying to do something different tonight, um, kind of mix it up a little bit. I've done a lot of high energy songs the past couple of nights, so this one's a little less that. Just something I wanted to do ever since I saw RuPaul's Drag Race and Divine and all them when I was younger and now I'm doing it. I'm living my dream. It's a beautiful form of artistic expression that is limitless. Seeing Bugs Bunny 
do drag on TV as a child has always kind of shaped my artistic direction, and this is an amazing way of just expression for people. But I was always sort of hesitant to start doing drag, and then I did it, started doing it four months ago, and I'm here, and it's probably been the best four months of my life. Growing up, I did classical ballet, and I noticed a lot of uh, issues with the gendering in it. And my teachers kept telling me to find confidence and like be more manly. But in them constantly telling me that, I think it diminished everything. And now I just do non-binary drag, and I explore dance and movement in each performance. Well, I'm not gonna lie. I think I swallowed an eyelash and I slipped on a pearl. My name's Emily Ann Fraser. You're watching Outlook TV Vancouver. That is all the time we have for this, our second retrospective episode. We hope you enjoyed revisiting all of these episodes with us. And in the meantime, before you catch our next episode on OutTV or OutTV Go, you can watch past episodes on YouTube and you can follow our fabulous social media on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. We're everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Rebecca Wyman. And I'm Ollie. Stay, Stay fabulous, fabulous, Canada. Canada.